Come on, let's clap our hands for Brother Cody as he comes to give us the word for today. All right, good morning. Good morning. All right, as always, I do like to take a moment to honor and thank our pastor for allowing me the opportunity to hang out with you beautiful people. It's something that I look forward to. I told my wife uh, a few weeks ago, I said, baby, is it weird that I'm looking forward to speaking again? And she said, no. And then the next day, Pastor Combs said, uh, brother, I'm going to need you to speak next Sunday. And I was like, well, thank you, Lord. I said, I'm re I don't know why, just something in my spirit was looking forward to spending time with y'all again. So um, today I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump right in. I want to talk to you today from the subject, satisfied on the surface, satisfied on the surface. And I don't want us to read into satisfied on the surface as a good thing. I want us to never become satisfied on the surface. Last week we learned, Pastor Coleman preached to us and explained to us the importance of the word. The word is so powerful. I watched a movie a long time ago called The Book of Eli. Y'all ever seen that movie? And Denzel Washington, he, 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 was, he was blind. And he, I didn't know it until the end of the movie and then I still didn't want to believe he was blind, right? So there's a scene in the movie where the man wanted the Bible, the evil man wanted control of the Bible because he knew that with this book, you can control people. That was one of his lines. You can control them with this book. And I thought to myself, how many of us in this world are being controlled by people that know this book but don't know our God? Right? And we will fall into all these traps because we are operating on the surface. We're satisfied with surface relationships, all right? I got a lot of scripture for you, so get ready to write them all down. And if you're not writing them down, pretend you're writing them down. Pretend. Everybody got their imaginary pens ready? All right. The first one I want you to write down is Luke chapter 6, verse 48. And it says this, Luke 6, 48 says, He is like a man which built a house and dig deep. And laid the foundation on a rock, and when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house, and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. That's what the wise man does. It says he digs deep. He lays a foundation on the rock. If we, you and I, want a real and close relationship with God, we can never be satisfied on the surface. We cannot have the kind of relationship that God wants with us if we are surface, what I call surface saints, right? Or surface servants. Coming to church is good. Giving your offering is great. Singing in the choir is beautiful. Teaching in the pulpit is wonderful. But that isn't necessarily a sign that you are beneath the surface, that you've cracked the surface. Because there's a lot of people, myself included, who know how to Talk the talk, right? I can say a whole bunch of scriptures today. Y'all say, you know what? That was a good word. But when I leave here, does my life look like what I taught you? Because if it doesn't, I'm just on the surface, right? I'm just on the surface. The truest sign, the greatest proof that we are no longer on the surface servants is obedience, Okay, obe obedience is the greatest evidence that you truly are a person that is chasing after God. Here's your next one, Luke 6, 46. Again, Luke 6, 46, and these are Jesus' words. He says, and why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? We can talk about what he says. We can quote to others what he says. But until we're willing to do what he says, we are merely on the surface. And I don't want you to be satisfied on the surface. All right. Have you ever talked to someone who says something like that? They get caught into a conversation. It goes, doesn't it say somewhere in the Bible, blah, blah, blah. And it'll be like a weird saying like, oh, I don't think that's Bible. It sounds good, but. But the fact that you use the saying, doesn't it say that somewhere in the Bible tells you, you don't even know if it's in there. When you know what you know, you, everybody, well, I ain't gonna say everybody, I've learned to never assume things. Most of us know John 3, 16. 
and you can quote John 3.16, but what does that verse really mean to you? My wife and I walked out of Dollar Tree a while back because we're rich like that. And this little girl runs up to us and she was like, excuse me, sir, excuse me. I'm doing a, a scavenger hunt for my church. Can you quote John 3.16? And they were videoing me. So I started quoting and she was like, you're the first person today that knew that. I said, what? I was afraid to ask how many she had interviewed. If we don't know John 3.16 and we are claiming to be his followers, that means we are probably satisfied on the surface. Matthew 7, 21 through 23 says this. Again, Jesus' words. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then I will profess to unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Serving on the surface will get us absolutely nowhere. And yes, we may do a lot of good stuff. Uh, Lord, remember that time I put a thousand in the offering plate and, and you know, you know, it set me back. And God is like, Pff. you remember that time when I prayed for sister so-and-so and, you know, she used to get on my nerves and I still pray for it. Pff. You haven't done anything wrong. You just haven't really submitted your heart to God. And so the devil doesn't mind us coming every day, every Sunday with a smile and hearing a good word and leaving this place and staying the exact same and on the surface. Because he knows, I don't know if the screen, if my trusty sidekick has put it on the screen, is the logo on the screen behind you? Can you see the iceberg? You can see it, okay, He's, I'm gonna have to give him a raise. If you notice, the top of the iceberg is here, but everything beneath the surface is huge. The abundance that God wants to give us is after we go beneath the surface, right? We are operating and we're living with this much of what God wants to give us. And we're satisfied, but that's because we don't know what else is in there. The more you start hunting his word and digging in his word, the more you're going to want to dig. I've given you this illustration before. If you were to dig in your backyard and find gold, you would never stop digging in your backyard. You wouldn't even have a backyard. They're like, so you're building a pool? Nah, nah. Mind your business is what I'm doing. Won't you come to my house digging with me? Mind your business. Get this. We'd rather give the appearance that we're holy instead of just living holy. God placed this in my spirit. You may want to write this next one down. We expend energy pretending when we can channel that energy in pursuing. The same energy I use to pretend and, and put this facade on for y'all at church, I can use that same energy to actually start digging in the word to actually start spending time with him, to actually start growing. Instead of pretending I'm growth, uh, there's growth there. Instead of pretending that I know God, I'm going to actually pursue him. And you'll be surprised what happens when you start pursuing God. Y'all ever heard the saying, don't drudge a book by its cover? God lives by that. Matthew 15 and 8 says, this peak. People draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. This is what serving on the surface looks like to God. It's I hear what you're saying, but I don't see it. I hear what you say, Brother Cody, but that ain't who you really are. You're satisfied on the surface. I want you, the, the verse you just quoted, I want you to be devoted to the verse you just quoted. Me and Pastor are both rappers. Yeah, thank you. Uh. <laughs> devoted to the verse you just quoted. In 1 Samuel, 
you can read of the story when God told Samuel to go and anoint the next king. See, the people asked for a king. And God said, y'all don't want a king. They're like, yeah, we do. We want a king. And God said, y'all don't want a king. And they said, yeah, we want a king. And, and he said, Samuel, tell them what a king will do to them. Tell them that a king is going to make them pay taxes and take their daughters and make them work for him and take their sons and send them to war and take their land and give them taxes. And, and they were like, we don't care. Give us a king. So he gave them Saul. And Saul did OK for a minute. And then he blew it. And so God was getting ready to anoint a new king, and he sends Samuel to a man's house named Jesse. And Jesse had eight sons. So Samuel walks in the house, and he sees the first son, and this first son was a lot like me. He was tall, <laughs> handsome. Why, I don't know why that's so funny, y'all. Handsome. Y'all didn't let me get to the handsome part, you know? Handsome, you know, had big muscles. A lot like me, right? And Samuel goes, ha, that's him. You got to be the guy. And God says, nope, not him. So he goes to the next son. Him? Nope. Him? Nope. He goes through all the sons that are in the house. And God says, nah. Samuel says, this is weird. You ain't got no more sons, dude. He said, I do. But he's a little scrawny kid in the field. You're not going to want him. Samuel says, go get him. Matter of fact, we won't even sit down until he gets in this house. So he goes to get David. Bring David back in the house, and God says, that's the one. Why would David be the one? Because David would never be satisfied on the surface. David wanted every ounce of God that he can get. 1 Samuel 16 and 7 says this, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance. Don't look at the outside. Don't look at the surface. Or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. If the Lord is not satisfied on the surface, we can't be. Yeah, you got on your nice church clothes and they look wonderful. Surface, God is not impressed. If it's Versace, God goes, eh. If it's, I don't know the other ones, because, you know, I told you, I'm a rich school teacher who makes lots of money, who shops at Walmart. <laughs> Luke 11, 9, 11, 13 says this. And the Lord said unto him, now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. I had taught a lesson a long time ago on Wednesday night, and I brought in this cup, and I put some dirt in it, and then I put some water in the cup. And I asked them, anybody want to drink this? And everybody's like, nah, you know, what kind of, what kind of teacher is this offering dirty water, right? So the, I had another cup that was dirty on the outside, but clean on the inside. And I poured water in that. If you were dying of thirst, would you drink this? Yeah. Because what's on the inside is pure. Even though the outer appearance might not be acceptable to the world. But what we do is we polish the outside. We take care of the surface. And we never take care of what's inside. And the Lord says, I, need, I look inside of you. And what I'm looking at, Brother Cody, I don't like. And yes, everybody in church is fooled because you do a good job of teaching them. But when I look at your heart, Brother Cody, I don't like it. And then it puts me in a dilemma. Lord, show me what you don't like and help me to release that to you. Or I can hold on to it because I'm used to this and no one else knows. You know, the enemy loves that, that you will hold on to a appearance when the inside of us is pure rotten pure rotten on the surface we look the part but inwardly we are falling apart God is not fooled and he wants to help us he wants to help make what is a facade in our lives to become a fact in our lives why fake it when you can make it right why why pretend to be saved why pretend to be holy when you can actually be holy Everything that you need to live a life that God has called you to live, he has provided. Provided. It just 
feels weird because it's going to go against your fiber at times. Sometimes he's going to require you to do stuff that doesn't feel normal. Hold on. You saying let that go? I can't let that go. That ain't the way my mama raised me. I get it. Mama was wrong that time. That time. <laughs> that time. <laughs> right? I know it's some of the stuff that is deeply rooted in us. We have to let the Lord expel it because it is keeping us from living our very best life. Psalm 51 and 10, these are David's words after David had messed up. He says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. What I want from you, Lord, more than anything is a clean heart. Because I can't, we can't serve God with a, with a dirty heart. Now, here's the beauty. Your heart could be filthy dirty today. And you can say, Lord, create in me a clean heart. He doesn't tell you to go find a clean heart and come back to him and then he'll do surgery and put it in you. He says, give me your dirty, crusty, stony heart and I will give you a heart of flesh. I will give you a heart to chase after me. I will give you a heart that is never satisfied on the surface. You might be surprised at how much you crave the Lord when you're no longer OK with just pretending that I'm good with God. Would you rather find out that you are on the outs with God when you breathe your last breath? Or would you rather someone tell you right now that brother, sister, you faking it. Just be real. I would rather someone tell me the truth, even though it hurts and stings and it, 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 it doesn't make me feel good, but I know they're going to put me on the good path. Right? God wants a deep and intimate relationship with us, and this requires that we give him our whole heart. Luke 5, verse 4 and 5, in this section, it's talking about a time where Jesus is a, he's talking to Peter uh, Peter's on the boat and he says, Peter, won't you uh, push out to the deep and uh, you're going to catch some fish. Don't push out to the deep. Anybody know what Jesus did for a living? Carpenter. Yeah, you can say it like you mean it. They're like, oh, oh, Lord, this is a tough one. Oh. Carpenter. He was a carpenter. He's talking to his disciple who is a fisherman. He's telling a fisherman how to fish. Right. You know, hey, how you going to tell me my business? So look at what Peter says. This is Luke chapter five, verse four and five. It says, now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. Verse five. And Simon answering said unto him, master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. I just told you, sometimes serving the Lord feels weird because he'll tell you stuff that doesn't make sense to you because it goes against your fiber. This is Peter who's been fishing since he's this small. His dad has been training him and he's a man who owns his own fishing boat now. And here's a carpenter telling me where to park the boat and fish. And I've been working all night. I'm tired. I want to go home and go to sleep. See my wife. But Jesus, since it's you, I'll listen. I will launch my boat to. The, and he, as he's launching out to the deep, he might have been having thoughts. I can't believe I'm even doing this. I don't know why I'm even doing this. He's a he's a carpenter. What am I listening to him for? But I'm, I'm just going to do it. Now, get this. As long as we remain on the surface with shallow relationships with God, we're never going to catch the big load. Obedience is what takes us deeper and obedience is what rewards us. The rewards for following God are found in relationships that are deep, right? Relationships that grow. Look at the next verse, Luke chapter five, verse six, and it says, and when they had done this and when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. So they went from not being able to catch nothing to now we caught so much we can barely pull it in. 
The boat is sinking. It's too heavy. We got to let some of this back out into the sea. Obeying God and following him with a, with a whole heart is going to open your life up to things you had no idea. In Malachi, Malachi tells us that God will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that what? Y'all still, still don't know? I can't hear you. You still don't know? I still can't hear you. Okay, all right, all right. I got one person that knows, all right. You finna get a blessing, girl. Y'all better move over. It's finna fall on top of her. See, the blessings that God is talking about in Malachi is not for surface level followers. That's for people that's willing to go deeper, right? That's for people who are willing to seek him with all of who they are. Hebrews 11 and 6 says this, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I always love the word diligently. I don't know why. The first time I heard that verse, I said, I like that word diligently. I think I'm going to have another son and name him diligently. <laughs> diligently, Cody, come here. My wife said, you're going to have to have it with somebody else. <laughs> Does the Bible say he is a rewarder of them that come to him? No. Diligence. People who are diligent are not satisfied on the surface. They want more of God. They want more of God. They want to be close to God. One of the sayings I've said to you, and I'll say it probably every time I talk to you because I love it, we are as close to God as we want to be. We are as close to God as we want to be. Anything that is keeping us from being close to God is not on his behalf. It's us. We're putting barriers. We're putting obstacles. We're putting things that keeps him from moving in our life. It's not him. So we are as close to God as we truly want to be. So if you say, you know, I just don't feel close to God, we have to do a self-evaluation. What's in my life that's blocking him? Because I know he will not withhold any good thing from me, especially himself. So what am I doing to block his blessing? Joshua 1 and 8 says this, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou shalt, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. When does the prosperity and success come? It comes after. After we've meditated day and night, and then we do it. You see the difference? You can't just talk about the word. Talking about the word means nothing. The devil talks about the word. You've got to do what the word says. Doing what the word says is like digging a little deeper. Digging a little deeper. Digging a little deeper. Jeremiah 29 and 13 says this, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. God is not trying to hide from us. But are we willing to search with all of our heart? Or are we only waiting for Sunday for when the speaker talks to me? I, I mean, I can't wait for Sunday to see what Pastor got to say. What about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? I was, I'm listening to an audio book right now by Dr. Miles Monroe. A great pastor from the Bahamas, and it's a it's a book on prayer. And he talks about how people say that they love God, but the least attended service at every church is prayer service. The one time you can connect with God, I mean, like you can pray and send your voice up to Him, and yet no one is coming to this. Do we really love God? You see, that, I mean, like, that's what it should channel in my brain. How much do I love God? Because if they say Bible study, it's like, ah, I'm tired. So is your teacher. So is everybody else that came. I promise you there have been Wednesday nights where I'm like, Lord, I'm not going to make it tonight. Help me to get in there. And as soon as I walked through the doors, the Lord was like, you made it. So here's a, a dose of energy. 
Then I can't sleep because now I'm thinking about what I learned on Wednesday night. I'm like, Lord, Pastor's just too good of a teacher. It's so much to a digest. Thank you, Pastor. You're all right with me. If you show up, God will do the rest. You got to be willing to show up. You got to be willing to show up. If you seek him with all of your heart, you will find him. Deuteronomy 4, 29 says, but if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Are we seeing a pattern here? Finding God isn't hard, but we got to be willing to go searching. If we really want to experience God's greatest blessings, we've got to be willing to go beyond the surface. Go beyond the surface. In Matthew um, 17, I'm not going to pull this up for the sake of time, but I'm going to tell you about it. In Matthew 17, verse 14 through 21, and you can look this up later when you get home. Um, there's a, a boy that had a spirit in him, and the dad brings the boy to the disciples. And he says, can you please cast this demon out of my son? And the disciples had, had done this before. They had experience with casting demons out before. And for some reason, this one would not give in to them. It, it just would not listen to them. And so the disciples, they come to Jesus and they say, Jesus, can you help with this? And Jesus says, all right, look, he speaks to the demon. The demon leaves the boy. And they say, how come we couldn't do it? Like, what happened? Why weren't we able to accomplish that. And Jesus tells them that some comes from fasting and praying. Fasting and praying. And I thought to myself, most of us don't mind praying. But what if God requires you to fast? See, that's going beneath the surface. That's not easy. That's giving something up. See, a fast is not just food. Right. Some of us. Oh, yeah, I'll fast. I, it's not, what if it's fasting your TV time? Oh, no, nah, you know, I got to watch my shows now. See, that's what I'm saying. And I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. Please don't don't look down like he talking to me. No, I promise. I ain't talking. I'm going to look up over everybody's head. So no one thinks I'm talking about them. I, I just I got. Hey, this is my quiet. This is my time. The Lord understands you. Right. But the Lord is saying, are you willing to put all of that to the side to spend this time with me? For the greater blessing that you want. Are you willing to go beneath the surface? Or are you satisfied with, Lord, I'm going to say this prayer. And if you answer it, now, it's meant to be. But if you don't, I'm, uh, hey, that's just what the Lord says. The Bible says, ask, seek, knock. Ask, seek, knock. What if I stop at asking? I might not get it. Seek. I found it, but... It ain't coming to me. Knock. Do whatever it takes. Be persistent. Keep chasing him. Because if you chase him like this, the Bible tells us you will find him. You will find him. But if he requires of you more, are you willing to do more? Or am I satisfied on the surface? Matthew 5 and 6 says this. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. If we go deeper, he will satisfy us. We've got to want Jesus, as they say, like a drowning man wants oxygen. I don't know if any of y'all in here can't swim. Anybody who can't swim? <laughs> I see a few people pointing at other people. She can't swim. I tried to drown her last week. <laughs> Have you ever seen a person that can't swim, but they get in the water, but they'll never put their face under the water? It's like, eh, oh, no. When I was at TSU, I'm a physical education major, so I had to take a lot of classes. And one of the classes was swimming. And we had an elderly lady in there, and um, she just, she wanted to jump in, but every time she got to the edge, like, she stepped back. And she, she'd come up to the edge again, and she, and she stepped back. And then I heard that little evil voice in my head that says, push her in. Uh, I was already saved. So I heard another voice say, you bet not. <laughs> yeah. 
you better not push that lady. But all I can imagine, if I'd have pushed her in, she'd have been ah, flailing, ah, even though she could have just stood up and the water been at her neck. Because it was only like, you know, four feet. But when you're afraid and you can't breathe, all I want is oxygen. What if we wanted Jesus with that type of diligence, with that type of fervent, I, I want Jesus so bad, I, I want him like a drowning man wants oxygen. We've got, many of us are expecting to catch the swordfish of our faith fishing in Percy Priest. You can't catch a swordfish at Percy Priest. If you want to catch a swordfish to go over your mantle, you got to go to the ocean. You got to be willing to fish in the deeper waters. And if you want the abundance of God's blessing in your life, you can't be satisfied fishing in shallow ponds. You got to take a risk like he took a risk on you. He said, I'm going to die for you even if you never live for me. Deep waters. Psalms 34 and 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Many of us have never tasted the true goodness of God because we've never gone beneath the surface. In my hand is a kiwi. All right, I will actually give this to one of you who sits up straightest. All right, Sister Smith, you're winning. All right. This is a delicious fruit. Some of you say, I don't like kiwi. That's cool. You don't have to win it. Now, if I lick this kiwi all day long, I'm never going to experience the goodness of this kiwi until I'm willing to what? Go beneath the surface, right? As long as I'm satisfied on the surface, all I can do is say this fruit is good. I can't tell you for real. You hear people say God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Is that what you've heard or do you know it for certain? Because when you know it for certain, it sounds different coming from you versus it just being a church cliche. This, I, brother, I know for certain that God is good. All the time, no, sister. No, no, all the time. Well, what about that time you went through that? Am I still standing here? He's good all the time. Y'all better not make me cry. Some of us are okay with knowing about Jesus. And some of us want to know him so bad. I think about Zacchaeus. See, Zacchaeus had heard about Jesus, and then he heard he was coming to his town, and he wanted to meet Jesus. But when he couldn't get through the crowd because he was small, and they, you know, they wouldn't let him by because they didn't like this dude. He's like, I can't, I can't see Jesus. So the Bible says he runs down the road and he climbs up a tree because he wanted to see Jesus. The Bible tells us that Jesus walked down that road and stopped at the tree, looked up the tree and said, Zacchaeus, come down. Y'all want me to sing the song? <laughs> no. <laughs> Zacchaeus was not satisfied on the surface. It wasn't good enough to hear about Jesus. I need to meet him for myself. I want to commune with him. And when he met Jesus for real, for himself, it changed everything about him. This dude gave back four times what he had stolen. If I stole from you, I'm just giving you back what I stole. But if the Lord says, now nah, you got to go above and beyond. Oh, okay, Jesus. That's what going beneath the surface will do to you. It will change who you are. If you don't see any change in your life, you got This is another moment of self-reflection. I can't tell you because you may have tricked me because, you know, me, I see the good in everybody. I think that's one of the gifts that my mom passed down to me. I see the good when good ain't even there. <laughs> ah. Pastor Coleman said it a few weeks ago. He said, you know, those people that they always have some positive to say, like, brother, shut up and let me be negative for a second. Let me let me vent like, well, maybe they didn't see it that way. But my brain, for some reason, don't. See the negative. 
except for when I'm at work. I see it a lot then. So let's close by looking at why we don't want to remain on the surface. Last verse, write it down. Luke 6, 48. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. Jesus died so that he can bring us back to God so that none should perish. None. So if I perish, because many will perish, if I perish, it's because I refuse to go beneath the surface. I was satisfied with thinking I'm good with God when I could really be good with God. And I don't want you to leave this place going, I'm good with God. I, I've heard people say this, this, this statement, it does something to me. I don't know how to explain it. Me and my God are good. Who, well, who is your God? Because if it's the same God that I serve, I don't, I don't think so. Because, and I'm not judging our sins differently. I'm just saying I can see your sin. Like it's blatantly in front of everyone. You have no desire to change it. But me and my God are good. Which God are you talking about? Because the God that we serve, if you're talking about the same God that I serve, he's telling me that he's not good with that. But if I'm satisfied on the surface and I've fooled enough of y'all, I might be okay. I read it to you earlier. I don't know if you were paying attention. Lord, I did this in your name. Lord, I did that in your name. I even did that for you, Lord. We good, right? God says, I never knew you. Depart from me. Every person he says, depart from me, is going to break his heart. But he is a God that cannot lie. And he has told us in his word what is acceptable and what is not. So we have to make the decision. And the best day to make that decision is today. To never, ever, ever be satisfied on the surface. As I always say to you, thank you for lending me your ear. I pray that you will give God your heart. God bless you wonderful people. Sister Smith.